today's vantage point, I want to combine family histories, historic migration patterns, and genetics to show that no matter what society has to say, you are uniquely made, especially those folks in Appalachia and the South. However, your parts are not unique. We carry genes from thousands of ancestors who themselves were carrying those of their ancestors. Still, many people in the South, and Appalachia especially, don't really appreciate their place among the many phenotypes found around the world. Now, a phenotype is basically how we look, hair color, eye color, skin color. This promises to be a thought-provoking show. So, I hope you'll grab a cup of coffee and join me. If you're from the South or Appalachia, you have most likely heard someone in your family say something like this. I don't know where my folks came from, but my great-great-grandmother was a full-blooded Cherokee Indian. <laughs> Based on data that I have uh, accumulated here on the vantage point, uh, we can now add the Melungeon people to the short list of proud ancestries that many people, residents, either claim or want to claim. I arrived at this conclusion by the number of views and comments that people leave on the channel. For those of you who don't know, I do a lot of stuff on surnames and DNA and genetic stuff. For instance, one person wrote that Tennessee Ernie Ford was a Melungeon. Another wrote that Johnny Depp and Elvis got their dark good looks from the Melungeon. <laughs> Elvis was a cotton top when he was a kid and he had natural light brown hair and blue eyes as an adult. He chose to give himself the dark look because he understood that actors with darker physical traits had more success in Hollywood. Elvis worked hard on his tan and he dyed his hair black. Thankfully, he didn't change his eye color. I've never read anywhere that he wanted to do that. Still, <laughs> I can just hear some 14-year-old groupie saying, Oh, Elvis, I just love your baby blues. Frank Sinatra has nothing on you. Of course, he would answer, Thank you. Thank you very much. There's one thing that strikes me the most from the comments that I've received from regional folk. Many believe that brown or dark hair, dark eyes, and darker skin tones are unique and must indicate some mystery population or a Cherokee ancestor or two. Even my dad saw himself as a Cherokee despite having never known a full-blooded Cherokee in his life, nor did he ever know anybody who was a member of a tribe. Based on my analysis, Dad was less than 3% Native American. He was 97% European. Despite being blue-eyed and fair-complected and prone to skin cancers, which a doctor told him was because of his Scots-Irish ancestry, he dismissed any European heritage, thinking that the Cherokee were his kin. I wonder if they reciprocated that. I doubt it. With all this said, how do eye and hair colors and skin tones sit in a global context? I believe that many folks look around their neck of the woods and assume that the world's population looks like their family, neighbors, and friends. Is that a fair assumption? I don't think so. Let's look at some numbers. Brown eyes. Let's start off with brown eyes. According to the Academy of Ophthalmology, the entire world had brown eyes as recently as 10,000 years ago. Blue eyes were caused by a mutation, but it helped people who lived in areas of the world with less sunlight to see better in the dark. But it also makes them vulnerable to eyeball cancer, of all things. All blue-eyed people are distant cousins to each other. Of course, brown eyes come in various shades of darkness, but they're all brown. No one has black eyes. In a global context, about 79% of the world's population now has brown eyes. That's nearly 8 out of 10 people. That's quite a bit. Blue eyes. Let's talk about them. People with blue eyes make up between 8 and 10% of the world's population, but in the United States, the percentage is a little higher at 27%. Most people with blue eyes are of European descent. However, the further north one travels in Europe, the more likely it is that he will find blue-eyed people. For instance, only 16.3% of the Spanish population has blue eyes, while 89% of the populations of Estonia and Finland have blue eyes. Only 39.6% of the German population has blue eyes, despite Adolf Hitler's fascination with them. Some 55% of Norway's population is blue-eyed, but the blue-eyed folk in France make up only 22%. 
The blue orbed portion of the populations of Ireland and Scotland range between 50 and 57 percent. So about half of their populations have brown or green eyes. As we'll see in a few minutes, green eyes are prevalent there. Now, let's talk about hazel eyes. Approximately 5% of the world's population and 18% of the people in the United States have hazel eyes, which are a mixture of green, orange, and gold. You might note that hazel eyes are somewhat common in North Africa, the Middle East, and Brazil, as well as among the people of Spanish heritage. Let's talk now about amber eyes. My daughter Sarah has amber orbs. Her mom has dark brown eyes, and I have dark blue-gray eyes. About 5% of the world's population has amber-colored peepers. They're common among people of Asian, South African, South American, and Spanish descent. Green eyes. Are you looking for green eyes? Well, your wait's over. Only 2% of the world's population has green eyes. Green eyes are more common in Ireland and Scotland than anywhere else. Now, let's take a look at hair color. Black. Let's start off with black hair color. While all ethnicities carry genes for black hair, it's not surprising then that some 70% of the world's population has black hair. These people are mostly concentrated in three regions around the world. Number one, Africa, pre-Columbian Americas, and Asia. Other regions where black hair is common include Eastern Europe, Southern Europe, and Latin America, regardless of the ethnic background of the person with those traits. Keep in mind, though, that 76% of the world's population lives in Africa and Asia. That's 60, 76%. Wow. Brown hair. Most people with brown hair come from Europe, but those people with lighter shades of brown are found in the northern and central parts of Europe. Folks with darker shades of brown come from the remaining parts of Europe especially Spain and Portugal. People with medium to light shades of brown are found in large numbers in Australia, the United States, and Canada. Most of these people are descendants of immigrants from regions like Eastern, Northern, and Central Europe. According to World Atlas Online, people with dark brown hair also exist in the Middle East, Central America, and uh, Central and South Asia. In some regions of East Asia, people have hair with an extremely dark brown color, which can be easily confused with black. The same is also true for people in Pakistan and South America. Blonde hair. Blonde hair is incredibly rare. Only 2% of the world's population is blonde. Like Elvis and yours truly, many adults with light brown hair were once blonde as kids. They were called cotton tops in my neck of the woods. How about in yours? What were they called there? Women are more likely to keep blonde hair into adulthood. Blonde, however, is not the rarest hair color. Nope, sure isn't. Red or ginger is. Now this may come as a surprise or shock to many people in Appalachia, but red-haired people, like your cousin, are the rarest breed of humans. Only 1-2% to of the world's population has natural red or ginger hair. The region with the greatest concentration of redheads is Northern Europe, including countries impacted by immigration from Germanic and Viking lands, like for example in Scotland and Ireland. Their hair strands are the thickest among all hair colors. According to the BBC, most of the people on this planet don't live in Europe, and if you just think about Asia, it's very, very rare to see somebody there with red hair. And in most of Africa, it's exceedingly rare to see somebody with red hair. It's an unusual trait globally. When we put all this information together, it's possible to see that if you have blue or green eyes and blonde or red hair, you are highly unique in the world. In the United States, only 9.3% of the population has blonde hair and blue eyes. People with green eyes and blonde hair are even rarer. The same is true for red hair and blue eyes. Extremely rare. The moral of today's show is this. No matter your hair color, eye color, and skin tone, you are not alone. But you are uniquely made. Resist looking for an exotic ethnic group to join. They already know their members. It's time that you get to know yours. Until I see you again, may the good Lord bless and keep you. May he make his face shine on you and give you peace. Bye-bye.